All right, good morning, everyone. Just a quick reminder, these meetings are recorded and they eventually make their way onto YouTube. I've put the meeting minutes link into the chat if you could add your name to the attendees list. And um, we can go ahead and get started. So real quick, is there anything documentation related that anybody would like to add to today's agenda? No? Okay. Um, next up, before we dive into the glossary and into the definitions deck, I wanted to kind of start to figure out what our next steps are. I think we're getting pretty close to the glossary being finished. And I think the next step would be to actually write like documentation specific to components, um, documentation for the SDK, for the NSMD, um, what a registry is in detail, et cetera, et cetera. And also have that marry up to the code. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts or opinions on kind of like next steps coming after the glossary. Uh, hi, Jeff. I think um, one thing that we probably we can do is to uh, do something like a FN, I mean, Q&A, question and answer, just to collect some, like say, typical questions or any questions like say, uh, whoever the uh, participant, um, the people in the community, uh, while they are, like say, uh, manipulating Makes sense to me. So Ed is sick today too, everyone. I don't know. I know he's not going to be here. I haven't heard from Frederick, but um, so I think uh, adding to the fact is a very good idea. Um, like there's tons of misconceptions like VPP is the data plane for all NSM, things like that. So capturing that knowledge, well, we just lost Jay. Um, but capturing that knowledge, I think would be a great idea. We lost Nikolai too. Is, are, is there people having trouble with Zoom this morning? Seen like three or four people pop off and jump back on. Uh, I'm fine. I had to manually put the meeting ID in, but that happens to me sometimes. Okay. Well, hopefully, um, Nikolai and Jay can jump back on. Um, Taylor, Watson, do you guys have any other thoughts on like next steps in documentation? All right, then I guess we'll um, jump into the glossary. The only thing I could think is, uh, as it's maybe organized for the audience, if if we end up with either the another section or potentially another document for other audiences. I know that's been part of what we've been discussing all the way through. Yeah, so let me show you, I, I kind of, touched on it a little bit, but um, obviously the glossary isn't going to be just something that people pick up and consume easily. So I have been working on this and um, for the things that I feel like are a little bit tougher to understand, I've been trying to sticking with like the graphics that like theme that um, Ed and Frederick Nikolai have used in the past. I've tried to kind of keep it consistent, but um, I'm trying to like build this out in parallel and uh, Watson, I could definitely use your artistic eye um, for some of this type of stuff, but trying to figure out ways to, you know, for those of us who can't just like read a sentence and instantly understand what something is, provide visuals. And I think we could probably even build out these definitions in more detail as we go along. But um, 
I agree 100%, Taylor, that um, just handing off the glossary is going to be good for, you know, the development crowd and just sticking it next to the code so they can quickly reference a term. But um, for people who just want, like, general knowledge and consumption on, like, what are the components in this and that, I don't think the glossary is going to be too appealing to them. So trying to build this in parallel, um, you know, trying to keep it consistent with the glossary, it's this link right here for those that want to look at it. Um, it should be fully shared so people can edit it as they need to. Um, but yeah, I just, as we kind of refine things and we start working on the use case documents with the other group, I'd like to kind of incorporate some of their stuff in here to give examples, et cetera, just so um, people really have like a warm and fuzzy on what something means when they dive into it. So um, I don't know, Taylor, do you think, something different than this or beyond this? Or do you think that this would kind of suit like the needs of what you were talking about? I think starting from um, the idea of a NSM developer, our perspective, and then working our way out to other audiences, which seems where you're going, sounds good. And that as far as consumption, um, this type of format is, I think, a good place to start. And then if someone's more interested, there may be, you know, more reference documents or stuff that they can dig in. But we need the, the broader audience um, is, I think, definitely the first place which you have covers that. Cool. And, you know, I try to put this in some kind of order, but this is literally just a collection of thoughts and pictures right now. So we can mix and mash this. Um, I, I feel like the toughest concepts so far have been around forwarding elements, data planes, like what a connection is and stuff. And so I specifically want to dive into that today because I think we're actually very, very close to having the core NSM terms for the glossary done. Um, I put this here, these aren't specific to NSM, so if we want to include them, um, we can. Uh, but I mean, like, I don't see how MTU, like, if, you're, if you don't know what MTU is, you should either A, be able to Google it, or probably shouldn't be, you know, using the network service mesh, I don't know. Um, if we want to put a lot of stuff into the glossary, we absolutely can, but um, for now, I've just kind of put it down there in that subsection. But the data plane has definitely been, and also now moving into um, looking at the deck and the glossary itself, um, assuming we don't have any other items we want to add to the agenda, is um, the um, concept of like what the service components were. We finally kind of got our heads around that, but um, the, um, the data plane has just really kind of, I'd say, flummoxed all of us because we all have a slightly different idea in our mind. So I've kind of taken the approach that you know, we were working on last week where we break it up into subcomponents and then saying that the data plane is something that gives us all of these things. And so um, we talked about calling this guy a channel, a micro wire, like all these different things. I found in one of the decks, so there's actually this thing in the code called a local mechanism. And um, mechanism was one of the words. I can even change this to be local mechanism if we want just so it stays exactly consistent with the code or if we want to change this um, and I know you had mentioned this last week Taylor that um, we're kind of at a an interesting spot right now where we could come up with human readable documentation and then try to you know coerce the code to match the terminology that makes sense to human beings so I'm open on this but basically we've got these what are called at the moment local mechanisms that provide these shim interfaces to the data plane, right? Like it makes a MIF attachment, it makes a kernel interface, it injects a virtual forwarder from an SROV NIC into a pod namespace, et cetera, et cetera. And it basically gives you an attachment to a wire. And we were saying that the wire is like the physical or logical implementation of the connection with the connection really just being like the sum of all these pieces of an end-to-end -end data flow, right? So. I'd like, before we jump down to the data plane one, for us to kind of just really quick discuss these real quick, decide if they need more massaging, if they make sense to people, um, et cetera, et cetera, just because they're basically, so instead of us trying to fully define what a data plane is, because that seems to be a point of contention, you know, if we're going with Ed's um, concept of it's whatever provides 
these things, regardless of whether or not it's an SDN controller such as ODL or Neutron, or it's an actual physical appliance that I'm putting an agent on and you know making direct requests to, it doesn't matter as far as NSM is concerned um, because we're just making a request for functionality, right? So um, yesterday's call, obviously, there's a lot of strong feelings on this exact topic. Um, I know Prim, Romke, Ian, they all really, really, really want to solve this piece right here, the mechanism of how do I get this virtual forwarder into this namespace, right? And um, it sounds like we are finally coming to the decision that that's not going to be solely NSM's responsibility, that maybe we build a library in parallel that NSM can consume to take advantage of these, you know, data plane accelerators. But um, I'm just curious now, I'll shut up for a second. These three definitions right here, do they make sense to people? And does the goofy little picture at the bottom kind of at least give some type of visualization of what they're trying to imply? Um, I can say that at least the visualization reflects whatever we, we already discussed. Um, this interest is interesting, post network, I see, yeah. Psychological. Yeah, uh, the, the, the text also sounds like. Uh, uh, is this somehow related to the text in the glossary? I think, I think. It yes. Should. So, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I've been putting in, because I'm kind of yeah. open. We, we can hand this off to you, Nico, Frederick, and Ed today as like our first rough draft of the glossary. But so I. I try to make sure that the deck, the deck is eventually going to expand out because I want it to be, to Taylor's point, way more human readable, like with examples and stuff. But at the moment, it, definition wise, it's open for one match. So originally we just had this. I pulled this out of some of the other documentation and slide decks where it actually calls out the local mechanism in the code, et cetera, et cetera. And so I kind of tried to massage this into our glossary definition that also fits in with what we're calling, you know, how it feeds into the whole concept of a wire and a connection. So if we're comfortable with this, then I'm going to remove all this fluff and just put what's highlighted in by my cursor there as the definition for a mechanism. And that, you know, also, do we call it a local mechanism or do we call it a mechanism? Um, mechanism? I'm not sure where local, because I see Frederick's message here. Local would be an interface remote maze. So, yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what we're referring to, right? We're specifically talking about I'm on a host. There's some type of forwarding element or some type of way that I'm going to move packets out of that namespace. And this mm -hmm. mechanism gives me that attachment, right? Like, yeah, or... exactly. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, so like you said, I, in the um, definition, it calls out, I just don't know if it's, and maybe we don't do it with the period. We just call it that. This makes a lot more sense to me, though, than microwire. Because yeah, yeah, like yeah, I agree. Muddied, so. Mm -hmm. All right then. So we'll get rid of Jeff Take here. And this, um, this is just in one of Ed's slide decks. So anybody that wants that specific thing highlighted in yellow, you can go and pull it out at any time. Okay, so. We have a wire. Um, we beat that one to death pretty hard last week. We have a connection. So now the data plane, let me do it with the picture. Um, I try to give two examples of a data plane that stretches two nodes versus a single node, right? But the, basically the data plane is the sum of all of this, right? It's, it's the mechanisms, it's the wires, and it's the end-to-end -end connection. It's how I get my packets from point A to point B. Um, and I'm careful because we're kind of going with, we're going after the developers first. I try not to get too into the weeds in this core definition of implying that there's some kind of forwarding plane or this and that, because in the Neutron instance, right, if we go into the OpenStack world, Neutron will give me mechanisms via vhost user or whatever. It'll set up the wires via Neutron networks, and then at the end, I'll get an end-to-end -end connection. Um, but Neutron itself isn't actually forwarding the packets, right? So I've tried to kind of skirt that line between sneaky network person and developer person and try to make something that kind of meets in the middle. 
Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, uh, Jeffrey, this is Gunnar. So I just want to clarify, like, so what, what's, what's, what, what, what's reality and what's, <clears throat> what's the vision? So, because uh -huh. I, I thought NSM really only worked with VPP today. Is, is that true or am I wrong? Well, you no. Know, so, I mean, most of the early development work has been done with VPP, but this comes to Jay's point that he made at the very beginning that one of our next documents needs to be um, working on the FAC, right? Like the frequently asked questions, because there is, um, because a lot of Frederick's early demos around like setting up a bridge domain and stuff, they used VPP as a means of achieving that. Um, but in reality, and this is where that big discussion yesterday around this right here, and really there being a library that we can use and call so that NSM becomes our common API, you know, interface. But if I want an SROV interface as opposed to VPP, right? Like I want to inject a virtual forwarder directly into a pod namespace. Um, there's a lot of contention on whether that's just baked directly into the source of NSM itself, or if that's an external entity that NSM just leverages. And um, it seems like yesterday's consensus, and I know that um, Ian and Ed have talked about this on the inside of Cisco, because there's some people inside of Cisco who have been working on this, is the local mechanism part will kind of be like a standalone library for NSM to call when it wants a virtual forwarder, when it wants a kernel interface. But um, VPP is just the first, you know, set of tools that they try to tackle around like the VPP agent and stuff. But NSM's data plane itself is in no way, shape or form directly married to VPP solely. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Thanks, Jeffrey. But um, yeah, and so like I said, we definitely need that, you know, Q&A because um, I had the exact same assumption, Gunner, when I, you know, first encountered NSM and I've seen at least in the, um, the Google groups, three other people ask that exact same question. So that's um, definitely something we'll want to clarify. Is anyone, has anyone done a, uh, a proof of concept using something other than VPP or is everything in the lab just VPP so far? So uh, currently, um, the data plane, as we said so many times, is VPP. Oh, there is a PR which we are working on our side to, to decouple the common code, the common data plane code from the actual implementation. And the target is to provide means and eventually we are going to, to, to try something with OVS or Linux bridges. And I know, um, Gunnar, so one of the challenges right now is um, we're doing all of the early development work in Kubernetes, right? And kind of similar to the question on VPP, NSM isn't necessarily solely for Kubernetes, right? It's supposed to stretch multiple cloud environments. Um, but since all of the early development work is in Kubernetes and Kubernetes has some quirks on how it interacts with DPDK, SROV, other data plane enhancement, you know, um, tools and functionality, we're having to go to Intel and the Kubernetes community upstream to ask for some fixes to take advantage of some of these tools. It just so happens that VPP already works very, very nicely in a Kubernetes world. And that's why, you know, it was kind of the, the 50 meter target to get an easy win, if you will. Okay, <clears throat> makes sense. Thanks, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's written right here, how do people feel about it? Um, sounds, sounds right to me. I mean, um, yeah, it, it reflects whatever you, you, you just, I mean, we were just, just discussing. I don't find any, um, yeah. Cool. Uh, sounds good. Yeah. yeah the, um, the part that I, with the forwarding element, I always wondered why it seemed like that was, like there was resistance to putting that, you know, the data plane is doing forwarding. And I like that the part that I would add, I wish that there was, we could just say, for example, VPP. Oh, 
OVS, let me look at this layer, what the data plane is supposed to be doing, because we, we have a general idea what those things do. So in, um, in this slide deck, we absolutely can put that in, Watson. So I, let, let's add some of these suggestions. The glossary, we just want it to be the bare bones definition, but this, this document is for exactly capturing those points. And I, like I said, I could really use everyone else's help in all the other definitions of us fleshing this stuff out. For example. Because I, I think if they can see that there's multiple data plane options that you just described right here, Watson, that will also kind of help with like the early questions I had and the one that Gunnar just raised where, you know, it's like, okay, this is more than just a control plane for VPP and Kubernetes, right? Right. And for, for me, <clears throat> when people are um, talking about why do we even need a service mesh from the dev side, from people who aren't really on the networking side at all. Um, the whole adding in things like VPP and OVS and saying that there are ways to do packet forwarding that are like faster than Linux bridges or faster than what just comes um, with Linux or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that part is important and uh, it's always lost on the programmer side. So. That's why I think it's important to put it in. I agree. But are we okay with in the glossary itself just sticking to the definitions or do we want examples in the glossary? I mean, without having Ed here and Fred, I mean, I'm always saying, to me, if someone just came to me and said, what is the data plane? And then someone just said, it's things like VPP, OVS, Linux bridges. I wouldn't need anything else. Sure. <laughs> and I'll be honest, uh, like, mm -mm. you know, and, oh. and Taylor called it out is that's why we need, and it doesn't have to be this slide deck, but there needs to be something like that. We just have like a document that we can just hand someone. And if they were just like, what is an SM? And I don't want to go through the whole journey of sales pitch of, you know, here's Sarah, yada, yada. I just, what are the components and what does this thing do? Like we need that document for certain. And then the glossary I'm kind of thinking, and like I said, this is just my random word vomit here is um, the glossary is just some bare bones definition that we stick and get right next to the code. So like when a developer's sees local mechanism pop up inside the code, right? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna do MIMIF. What is this local mechanism thing? He's like, okay, it's this thing right here, right? And it, it's gonna eventually help me build these two things underneath it. That's kind of what I saw the glossary as, but if we need to expand that, then I'm all for it. Uh, Jeff, could you please turn to the, uh, to the last page? Yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, according to the picture, uh, it seems that uh, my intuition is that the data plane does not include interface internals. Because uh, you label that, because these two are separate parts separated by colors. So I don't know whether that, cause, cause you put pictures uh, on this slide, you wanna, uh, definitely you wanna indicate like, which, actually which, which, which components does, uh, uh, does a data plane uh, contain. So I'm not sure whether a data plane will include these two things. So if, so if that's the case, if that's the case, then th there might be some little confusions of this picture. So th these would be the mechanisms, actually, not interfaces. Oh, the mech. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. That's a good, good, good catch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh. And then, what's really quick too? So and. You bring up a really good point. Like I was trying to keep some consistency with that stuff, but like maybe we just put this in parentheses and we call this a wire. Um, yes, that's, that's our current definition. That way we keep everything consistent, right? Mm -hmm. And apparently I spelt mechanism wrong as I copied and pasted it to everything, hooray. Does that make more sense, Jay? Right. 
should I add like an arrow or something too that just says all of this provides a connection or do you think that this is enough information in these pictures here? Uh, but you had something similar on the on the other slide that you showed. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think we're good then because they, they, they see this slide first. Okay. Cool. I think we've we finally had our come to Jesus around <laughs> wires and connections and data planes, etc. So it makes me feel good. Um, so then we're going to get rid of this. What? Are, why are you being weird, Google? None. We don't need a sneaky network person definition anymore. Okay. Okay. So service mesh, this is pretty industry standard. I just pirated this. So there's not a whole lot of controversy here. Same thing. I ripped this off of Istio's website. Um, network service mesh, carrying payloads, which are L2 and L3. Network service. Um, this was another contentious one, but Ed put this in here. I'm just going to leave it if everybody's cool with that. This one includes examples too. And actually, I think Watson, I am going to add into the data plane the um, since Ed put examples in that guy. I'm going to add this to the data plane definition. It's not so bulky that it should cause issues. Okay, so we have network service. Is everybody semi comfortable with this? Access control, I feel, is nothing unique to us. Network reachable resource. This is another Ed definition. I wordsmith that a little bit, but I left the content 99.9% .9 the same. Um, I don't know. What do you I guys think of this guy? I wonder how network reachable resource differs from, for example, load balancer. I mean, uh, it's a load balancer network reachable resource. I mean, it provides some functionality, so I don't know. Maybe yeah, this one was weird to me. I don't I don't even know why it was added, but but but, but I mean if you can scroll a little bit up why why we had to, to point to specific types of like proxy and cloud balancing. Are these just for examples or um yeah I don't know. See like I said that Ed put this in here. Um uh -huh. and I think he was just giving examples so I'm, I'm cool with examples being in a couple of these just because, you know, to Watson's point, I think the moment you read this line right here, if you didn't get what the data plane was from up here, um, this will make sense to you, right? Actually, yeah. Watson, should I add, because every single one of these has a forwarding element. Do you think I should add like Neutron and ODL in here too to also capture the sometimes abstracted version of what a data plane is from NSM's perspective? Oh. Uh, see, there's Nikolai, sneaky network person. <laughs> yeah, no, because neutron is not exactly the forwarding element, right? It's a bit. Uh, well, and that's why the definition, <laughs> or by making requests to an intermediate control plane, capable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 uncomfortable for the networking world, right? Because in my mind, a, a data plane has a forwarding element, but NSM, I yeah, mean, yeah. from its context, ODL gives it gives it the forwarding element. Maybe not directly, but NSM is not aware of that, right? Yeah, it is not, yes. Okay. So I, I'm gonna put those in just to keep things kosher between sneaky network people and applications people. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, back to the, to, to the point of uh, proxies and load balances. I just, just want to, to, to 
completely this little bit. Uh, because mm -hmm. we we get a lot of questions um, about this, and I, I guess that the purpose that Ed actually put it here is to just explicitly say that load balancers are not part of the data plane, right? I mean, it is something that you have to implement on top of NSM. Mm -hmm. So I guess that this is kind of part of the Q&A that we need to, to do. But, right, but, well, okay. when you say it's on top, because he's actually saying that this is part of a network service, right? So NSM yeah, yeah, yeah. might theoretically, if this, there was an NSC that had load balancing in it, right? Then, mm -hmm. exactly. okay, cool. So we're on the same page then. So we'll leave that. Network reachable resource. Like you said, this one, um, Ed added in later. What do we think of this guy? So I like the term resource. And I guess all resources have to be network reachable to be useful, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, it, it just says some element on the network, but wouldn't it have to be a reachable element on the network to meet this? Um, and then we also have this guy down here, the workload definition, which I actually want to put in front of endpoint and client. Actually, I should probably go in front of reachable resources too, right? So you have, here's the stuff, then there's stuff that's reachable. So, an element. How do we say is reachable by other entities or something? And I could say that directly, it just doesn't sound nice. Maybe. Kind of um, related to, and I forget if it's in this document, but the network, the manager, the thing that exposes the network service. Uh -huh. That, um, I don't, I forget where, okay, there it is. Right, so this thing is what makes things reachable, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's kind of the local agent that actually takes care for the uh, you know, finding resources, announcing new endpoints and all these things. Right. Software service answer inquiries. They may be specified in a group by choosing a specific network location that can be connected to the network service. So okay. I'm assuming the resources exposed by the network service manager endpoints are and clients uh, have knowledge of the manager through service discovery or whatever. Uh -huh. The location should be implied perhaps via a constraint rather than stated as a requirement of the service where possible. The aim here being to avoid the detailing of networking yeah. that is relevant to the needs of the developer. Okay, boom. Network service endpoint, network service client. We still comfortable with these? The the difference between the endpoint and the re and the resource. I thought resource came up because we were people were confused about the endpoint. Also, it is a client sometimes because it calls other. Um, yeah. So I think kind of like workload here. Um, so I added workload and Ed added reachable resource. I, I think these are meant to be just more, once again, kind of going with the, come up with the components of some of these more, you know, all encompassing definitions. So, I mean, an endpoint is, could be both a workload and a reachable resource, right? Um, and endpoints are unique in the fact that it's going to accept connections, um, but if it's midway in a chain, then it might also request connections, right? So 
an endpoint's unique in the fact that it can double as a client. Um, right. But at the most simplest, so, simplest thing, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and then, then we can tie them. Like if an endpoint is a resource, then. And actually, what if I change can. this? What if I say, you know, instead of saying a container pod or physical forwarder, since we call out a workload up here saying these things, mm -hmm. what if I say a network service endpoint is a, a workload um, providing a network reachable resource to clients? and just use our own definitions like have them build upon each other would that be better watson um, so we need to be a bit careful on this as well so a network service endpoint does not have to be does not actually have to own the, the resource it has to just provide connectivity or parameters to allow you to connect to it so so in other words, it like suppose you had some hardware device and you stuck an, an, an endpoint that was the right was ran in a pod, then the endpoint would return information like, oh, here are the VXLAN parameters in order to connect to this thing. But it's not required to actually own that uh, that resource. So do we just keep these as they are and just call out one accepts and possibly requests services, one only requests? I would say somehow linking it to resource, like and it's an endpoint doesn't own the resource, but it has knowledge of resources or location of resources. Or, or it, they, it, it could own the resource, but it's not required. Knowledge. Sources. How about this? Is this ambiguous enough? <laughs> Technically, this is a weird clause, so it should be Net common. network resource. With knowledge of network resources, offering a network service. Yeah, you come the, I have a bit of a problem with offering a network service because uh, usually okay. the endpoint, I mean, it will offer only the I mean, kind of the network service is composed of multiple endpoints. Uh, that would be the, the usual case. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, by reading this, you get the impression that a network service maps directly to an endpoint, and that's the only. So what if we split the difference here and just go like this? A container, pod, VM, or physical forwarder with knowledge of network resources. Is that cleaner? Silence being taken for acceptance. Maybe something like network service or network service provider. <laughs> and network service. Yeah, I was, I was muted. I just, uh, I just asked that. Uh, are we, are, are we having a direct, uh, ex kind of mentioning that the endpoints are part of the network service? Do we have this somewhere up? Um, well, that's what it, I think that's what the original line saying it offered a network service. So maybe we just need to say is a com helps is a component of the network service. I don't know. Let's, we don't have that now. And that's kind of what the last one was saying, but I think it might've been a little overzealous in what it was promising. So. I have to think more on this. And this is um, it, it be generic enough that, it, um, that we can encompass a lot of stuff in here tight enough that it still describes and makes sense to people. What's about network service point and saying endpoint? Jay, and your mic's a little choppy. I'm not 100% sure what you said. What I was saying, 
what's about saying network service point can say network service in All right. I guess we'll circle back around on these guys. Yeah. So since we now have Frederick Prim, Fani on here, we kind of cover these, give you guys a real quick, what I've highlighted with the cursor here. Um, we kind of talk these out. I think we kind of have a semi warm and fuzzy on these concepts right here. I'll give you guys just a couple seconds to review them. Okay, so I'm always injected into the positive networking mem space. Does it make sense for uh, mem uh, memf or ELS user? Say, say that again. You're chopping up. So it doesn't always get, uh, get injected into the interfaces. Do not always get injected into the pod network namespace. So, like, uh, if it's shared memory, for example, then it's uh, it's actually attached to the uh, file system and has nothing to do with the uh, the network uh, namespace. Yeah, that makes sense. So MemF creates a weird kerfluffle there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the host user. And maybe a sorry in the in the lost device now. Just axe this line. Yeah, but, but this is also or some kind of in, injection, I mean. Yeah, it's injection in the network namespace, file, you said file system or memory. I would say, so an injection. is there injected into then leave it at that. I would say, maybe I just get rid of this. It's injected into yeah. the pods namespace, right? Because it is, it, I mean, even in a MIMIF, like yeah. every single thing is its own unique namespace and something is having something injected into it to mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. a bridge. Not a network bridge, but just, yeah. Yeah, I think we could say that it is injected, and then we can leave it ambiguous from there. Okay. And so the other thing, too, we discussed, so, you know, yesterday, I think it most everybody was on yesterday's call, but this one is kind of like the hot button topic for myself, Prim, Bonnie, Ian, et cetera. And this is likely what's going to have the parallel library built around it, right, is all these local mechanisms for NSM to call so that way I can get a virtual forwarder injected into a pod when I need it, right? But um, we're defining what these are and there is in the code, you know, this construct right here that, you know, says like, I want this MemF interface with VPP, but um, I'm under the impression for right now, we're saying that like, when we look at the actual core forwarding elements and how we are gonna do this in the Kubernetes space, that this is gonna be a standalone library. Are we still kind of, thinking that yeah I think uh, uh, I would go with that I think it makes yeah. sense yeah because like we said yesterday much like DPDK obnoxious service providers like myself can decide how much mutability and pain we want to bring upon ourselves and those that don't want all that nonsense don't have to import the libraries right and also just so you guys are tracking because we covered this at the beginning so I'm trying to build like a human consumable like document that we can give to people in addition to what we're doing. And so these definitions, um, and actually let me make sure that this stays congruent. Um, so as you can see here, I'm trying to build out pictures. I'm trying to use the same graphics that Ed and Frederick have been using and some of their other decks um, like mechanism, right? SROV, MIMF, host user, et cetera when you stitch these things together, you get a wire and that end to end data flow, that's your connection, right? So trying to build some visuals around this, same thing like the data planes, this was something that none of us really were comfortable with at the beginning. And then once again, I changed this. Sorry for jumping around on the screen on you guys. Um, but trying to separate some stuff out like We've got those definitions on this previous slide on number seven that say, here's a wire, here's a mechanism, here's a connection, yada, yada. 
And from NSM's perspective, the data plane is anything that gives it those things. So whether it's directly going into, you know, affording element and programming rules, like, you know, going into OVS and making table entries, or I just go to Neutron and I'll rely on Neutron to do that for me. At the end of the day, all NSM knows is it makes a request and it gets the attachments and the wiring that it needs to make its connections. So one, one, one question here, uh, Jeff. Um, now you have brought in ODL and Neutron, right? Yep. Uh, ODL and Neutron um, may be part of the ENSM, right? Should we probably deal it in separate way uh, or um, I'm just thinking a lot. No, no, I'm with you. And as one of the sneaky networking people, this has really made me uncomfortable, but it's telling me I need to change the way I think. So this is what this line right here says, right, is by provisioning the mechanisms and forwarding elements directly or by making requests to an intermediate control plane that can then provide those four components I need. Okay, I see what they're saying. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And I, it, it makes me a little queasy, like, because obviously Neutron, in the truest sense of the word, is not a data plane. But from an right. instant perspective, it just knows whether it makes the request directly to OVS or it makes the request to Neutron. Why? Uh, yeah. You get are, the same end result. Yeah, because uh, I see what you're saying. So here it's Neutron is basically uh, uh, the proxy for the data plane, right? Exactly. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And maybe actually, maybe I should use that word in here. Request to a a proxy control plane, or I, I don't know. Proxy is probably a good word because if if you didn't just read this block and then that jump into your mind, then we probably need to wordsmith this a little more. To mm -hmm. a. Um, so I'm just getting started with ODL uh, at least. Uh, so one question I think to Frederick and Nikolai is that um, how do you foresee the wire getting extended uh, to uh, the ENSM world? Well, I guess you have um, some layer two means, layer three means, and some tunneling means. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it really depends on what the audio, I guess, what audio components you, you, you have in your de deployment and what you can uh, afford. I mean, I can easily imagine that you have a special audio configuration that actually can um, just um, terminate a tunnel uh, and then you directly route it to the um, to the uh, router in the in the neutron in the open stack the, the deployment there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, something I'm just, like that. Yeah, know. I'm just looking for ideas also. So, um, so so one thing is, I mean, I don't want to probably uh, digress a lot, but just half a second explaining what I'm doing, right? So pretty much what we have done is we have figured out a call from ODL to NSM, which was straightforward. Baron, we just use the gRPC client and then invoke things, where an ODL is just a client, right? But the reverse direction when NSM wants to use open daylight, uh, it would essentially be open daylight would expose mm -hmm. bunch of REST endpoints. Um, so NSM would invoke those REST endpoints to get it done. So it wouldn't be natively connected, but it would be via those, rows, uh, 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 via those uh, REST endpoints. Um, so which means, uh, uh, we uh, what I foresee is develop an ENSM. I mean, develop a proxy uh, over for open daylight so that the proxy can register um, can register the uh, uh, endpoints to the service registry. And then, uh, when NSM invoke wants to establish connection, the proxy would do the translate would do the connection between the ODL rest and then that of the um, NSM. Uh, so it, it has created a spec where, where we had shared thoughts. I don't know if you have uh, read through it, but mm -hmm. uh, essentially he, okay. he was proposing to base all these um, inter-cluster communications, being it, um, you know, just cluster to cluster or with TNSM to kind of base it on um, DNS uh, resolving. Okay. So I'll, I'll check it out. Sure. I'll, I'll probably go through it and then, yeah. Cool. But, but only question is now uh, uh, that would not be a data plane, right? In case 
would you even connect if it's a physical device then you even i'm from a physical device also i'm just failing to understand would there be any data plane access it would just be the control plane to nsm communication right i don't think that that we have fixed in our definition for data plane i don't think that we have fixed is it a physical i mean can it include physical or not i think it can actually in our examples we have specifically put audio and neutron just to um kind of express the fact that that uh, uh, you can have uh, uh, an external um, how to say data plane providers mm. <laughs> um, mm. Okay. Uh, which which can actually connect and form the connection because i think that the critical uh, um, jeff can you can you show the previous uh, slide because it, it really gives so essentially the c connection is as you see end to end so mm -hmm. you mean if you have some other elements uh, in between uh, helping you form the wires and all right. this uh, connectivity then they could very well be anything that that can help you do that okay Sure. Maybe so. what I'll do is I'll I'll add another picture. I might have to drop like the examples on the following page, but I'll do one where um, NSM manager is talking to, you know, I don't know, NSX or Neutron or something like that. You get that data plane proxy, if you will, right? And so, right. Um, right. I, I reworded that because I, I think proxy is probably the right word. Um, this may be achieved by provisioning mechanisms and configuring or affording elements directly, be they physical or virtual, right? It could be a Nexus switch or it could be VPP, or by making requests to an intermediate control plane acting as a proxy mm -hmm. capable of providing the four components needed to realize the network service. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so once again, going back to this you know, concept of, from the developer mindset of, I'm gonna make a request to something and that something, regardless of whether it has the forwarding element directly or it just has control over the forwarding element, is going to give me these things right here. Yep. Okay. We've got just a couple minutes left. So um, I put a note here. These ones, I think we're 90% of the way there, but we do need to kind of incorporate how they fit into the network service themselves now that we remove those other things. This part we just did. So I think next Tuesday, I'm hoping, you know, we get through these last few things. These are pretty vanilla. Um, this one, I think we kind of finalized last week together. So these guys, um, I pulled them right out of the specs. We'll just talk them over real quick. They, not nearly as sexy or controversial as things like data planes and mechanisms and wires. Um, but I think after that, we can go ahead and push our first draft of the glossary to get and start letting the rest of the community beat us up and tell us that our grammar sucks and that we don't know what we're doing. Um, yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, as always, everybody, I really appreciate your time and your input, and I'll see you next week. See you. Thank see you. you. Bye, man. Bye. See you. Everything, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.